The Wall Street Journal making the case this weekend, quote, no one is looking forward to the 2024 presidential election. The new article says, quote, if there's one thing voters of both parties and independents agree on, it's that few are looking forward to the run up to November 2024. You have to laugh at this. OK, I'm sorry. The two leading candidates, Trump and President Biden, look to be heading for a repeat of 2020. Few see much to relish in that, Krisha writes the journal your reaction i typically agree with the journal in this case i would say i'm actually looking forward to it i'm a political junkie i think all of us here are but i'm also more importantly looking forward to a potential change from what we're seeing right now um i don't think the media members of the media are looking forward to it though because i think there has to be um, a change with their reporting between their opinion and actual fact and we will see that on the debate stage let's hope um you know we'll see the clear differences between joe biden and whoever um, uh, the Republican uh, nominee is. But um, I think at this case, it can't get much worse than what we're experiencing right now. So I welcome a, a potential change and I'm looking forward to the, the cycle. John? Well, I just hope that Biden and Trump agree to a debate in the first place. That would be helpful. On the Republican side, it reminds me of the saying, what too many chefs spoil the stew. They have just way too many candidates. They have to winnow the numbers so that we have a better, uh, you know, a, a more competition for Donald Trump. Put it yeah. that way, quite simply, we can then begin to focus on the, the issues uh, for that matter. It's going to be a volatile year. I think 2024, uh, there's uh, big differences in the ideologies presented by the uh, by both parties i have you know one example look at all the subsidies you now have for electric vehicles and microchips and whatnot if the republicans win does that mean that all those subsidies are gone if those subsidies for evs are gone that's going to cause uh, the uh, motor vehicle industry to take a drastically different look at what they uh, plan to do in terms of production going ahead a lot of uncertainty not good for the markets maybe not good for the i agree with you on that because and volatility mm -hmm. could really return, especially if we do end up going into a recession later this year. That's still not off the table. We just haven't talked about it in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but, but I want to add something else here. You know, Krisha mentioned what we're dealing with now, the administration we have now. Well, President Biden had another week full of gaffes. Watch this. We have plans to build a railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean. The Build back Biden, build back better. She was 17, I was 40. Don't make me a dog-faced lion pony soldier. I might add, if I didn't, I'd be sleeping alone. All right, where are we going? All right. God save the queen, man. God save the queen. Oh, that one really had a lot of people well, scratching their heads. But look, Axios claims that Biden has an arsenal of wacky phrases he deploys. And while there are legitimate questions about Biden's age and stamina as he runs for a second term, his offbeat proverbs are just Biden being Biden. Krisha. Um, I, yes, I, I particularly like the uh, dog-faced pony soldier back in 2020 when he was dealing with a New Hampshire voter who was opposing him, and, and mo more recently, malarkey mm -hmm. um, with respect to what we were looking into with Burisma and Hunter Biden's connection there, as well as saying, where's the money? These phrases... While they may seem to Axios somewhat um, antiquated and cute, to the American voter are really disconcerting. And I think we deserve to understand Joe Biden's mental capacity because that's what these phrases truly mean. It's it's more than just um, being cute and, uh, you know, yeah. referencing another time. Well, John, <laughs> we, John, the American voter has their eyes wide open and they see that he's. I mean, we're talking about an 80-year-old. You could be a spry 80-year-old, or you could be a not-so-spry 80-year-old. That's right. true. And Biden doesn't know the queen is dead. It should be God save the king, not the queen. My goodness, the poor guy. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. for Biden, I think what's unfortunate is that he looks a lot older than Donald Trump does. Uh, yeah. Trump seems to be more sprightly. Unfortunately, uh, Trump still suffers from this uh, case of narcissism, runaway narcissism, <laughs> in love with himself, the of the universe. Uh, I, and people must be getting tired of having the septuagenarian, or I say also an octogenarian, running for president. Maybe it's time for a younger face. Um, and, that is, and that may become clear in the next series of uh, if we ever have uh, debates. There's, there's a lot of folks on the GOP ticket. It's a 
big group. It's a very diverse group. We shall see. Tim Scott, Chris Christie, DeSantis. I mean, it's a big list. All right. Well, coming up, how voters are reacting to President Trump's latest legal troubles. Will this hurt him in the 2024 race? Former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker 